Hello, my name is Lucky Mayo, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Um... Yep. Okay. A amnesia? Give me my lawyer's trying to defend me in the state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick should be all you need. Great. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Me too, Maggie! Yeah, well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. But we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Ah, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay. Really, I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. I really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back. Maybe it'll help. This is a business card. I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. <laughs> You can borrow it for now, but please give it back. Okay? Okay, there are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. I guess for now we should stop talking about me. And start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up and tell- hurry up then and tell me, this might be very important. Okay, Roger. Blah 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 blah, something about a phone. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6pm. I picked up a lost cell phone while I went on a walk with Dustin. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Beep! Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can get this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is it that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all along! You're so mean! Maya! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Maya! Uh, now, who, the, who in the heck is this? Let me guess. I'm supposed to know this girl, too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. Hey, Canel. Dude, come here. Come here. 
Why are you growling? No growling. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So? So? How's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh! What if I said that everything will be fine? That's right! Mind the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence. Here you are, Nick. The thing you want me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has, to be, it has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. Looks like these guys are up to no good. No good, as in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm... And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You only asked me to look this up yesterday! Oh! Is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm... So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. Hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. I am 27! I think... Wright is 27. Um, act Maya, actually Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops, guess I have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Fuck you, Maya. <laughs> w wish us luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not gonna lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. September 8th, 11.54 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I asked that the court might be a little lenient on... There's no need to give a preface, just hurry up and call your witness, please. Y yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls his next witness. A drifter who was taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Please state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tempted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a... Uh, nope. The, the male version of, uh, old bag. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. What is he, a human chatterbox? Maya! Uh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Glasses? But you weren't wearing glasses. Come here. That's enough, your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down? I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. I I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a er, strolling to the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. 
You must know I am... Anyway, please testify to the score about what you saw during the walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, hold up. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and I, there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I was talking to my friend. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent... Then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may not question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. What I saw that day. Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so early? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. But Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball club? Huh? 
Well, what? A baseball glove. Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? <laughs> He's such a fucking moron. Thank you. That's, that's not, it's a, no! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. The witness, this witness. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How, what, you, why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it was a very simple mistake to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. Nope. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You, you, you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo for his... Nope. Nope. And that, and that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both 2200. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? That, that, that is. Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But, you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them... How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? You're an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who reject Joan of Arkham... Yep, nope, nope, nope. Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven but to be the same by this witness. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the other path. Hmm. Witness. Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Y yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. The girl on the other path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have had a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that that girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Canelo! Lay down. Why would it take so long? Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So, what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There is clearly a 15 minute gap here. Do you deny it? I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during those, during this 15 minute gap. The 
witness was a shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murderer. It's only a, it's only to be expected that he'd be a little dazed. Fifteen minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Mr. Wellington. Explain yourself. What were you doing during during during? What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I uh telephone. Uh I mean spit it out. I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions as if you're trying to open all the, the layers of a met um, matryoshka doll. You must think you're really something special. Witness. I lost my cell phone. There, you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your, you lose your glasses and, you lo and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What, are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Don't you ever heard of the all geniuses? Are? Nope. Oh, man, oh, man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his... He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone! Could it be... You mean this phone Maggie found? There's no way. Oh, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Um... Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? <laughs> what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See? Here is it. Oh, god damn it. Oh, I see. Hmm. Looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think you've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his cell was caused by his search. The delay in his call was caused by a search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you? You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. All right, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's... it's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Is reporting the crime a little late proof for the defense. The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back, but Maggie said that she was going to return it to him, so there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Was he? Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any thoughts that you would like to share with the, 
The court, can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Ugh, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the court that one piece of evidence will... The one piece of evidence will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? But what? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah! Where... Where did you find... <laughs> I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. Canelo... These glasses were found just under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Arda! Arda! Now, wait a second. Hold on. I didn't confess or confirm uh, anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. That's why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. M Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Absolutely. Of course. Of course, that's precisely what I'm doing. It would be a Phoenix Wright game if otherwise. Ooh! I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! This is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Arda! Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Y yeah, that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. Hey. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that's, that's easy. Um, uh, for example, there's, um, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Y yeah, even an idiot can, like, th like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie, and the victim is, was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write the, her name on the ground? But, but... But, but, 
Wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone that the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would the person know her name was Maggie, or Maggie? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Ah, I forgot. Hmm, was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? It would be best if I could prove this witness had, had a chance to learn. That the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please represent its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you? How did you- Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with- Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you! I've been searching for my phone! Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can get this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um... Lay down. Lay down. They made one fatal mistake. Sit. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down, dude. Fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie, but the name was written on the ground. But the name that was written on the ground was Maggie. This is a mistake that could only occur if you knew how her if you if all you knew was how her name sounded. has no motive and your point is it's very simple your honor a person would usually would not kill someone without a reason mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone that is absolutely correct I don't have a motive Hmm. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? 
If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Sit. Stay down. Stay, stay down, please. And then please present to this the court this court the, the witness has a motive. Take that! Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list. These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You you looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist's group. What? Con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion, an invasion of privacy. Okay, but phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder. You're one of those people. You're just like the cops. Who, uh, yep. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be such a refined man as me? Your Honor, this this is this is unjustified battering of the witness. <laughs> Objection overruled. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have, have the numbers of a group of carnars on his phone? It's not obvious. The witness is. <laughs> Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No. All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. Canelo! No, no, this is too much! Come here. Stay in here. Lay down. Lay down. Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, what do you care to explain? I, um, I... Got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer... Your Honor, what is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this, is, this is just my badgering of the witness. You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. P -p 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 please, please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can get this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Miss Bird to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm, if you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something of the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm. Well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright. What was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Take 
what Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince? Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! The girl that picked up my phone is with the policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they were already running a check on the phone. And he went into a panic, is what you're saying? Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence... Evidence? Oh, that guy's really creeping me out. All you've been... All you've been waving around and talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number is this. Suspicious con artist that. They're all on that phone. But who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence. You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. The phone I lost, I've already found it. You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? Feels good to see you squirm. Hmm. We do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. With this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Y Your Honor! This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm. This cell phone? There has to be something it I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm. Maybe... I got it! We should check the fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. I... what? You said there was sand all over it, so... Wh wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. Ah, oh, it's so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ah, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the number stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. You gotta be joking. He erased all the numbers if I was... He was erased all the numbers. Fuck. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington. What's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find yourself, huh? <laughs> oh, you were too much. Of course you have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I, oh my god. Now I remember. Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. So that's when... 
What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's gonna get off scot-free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. Looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. I'm a pro. You made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> but that will be all. I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I had a reservation at that ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Please wait, Your Honor. Alright, Nick. I think I'm able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Y Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. But this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you're well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now that Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. It's the phone. Is this your final answer? It's a bit disappointing. No, 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 no. That was just a friendly gesture. <laughs> you sure know how to send a friendly gesture, Mr. Attorney. This is your absolute last chance, Mr. Wright. So no more of these friendly gestures. Fuck! What was it? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. Touch your business card at it to the court record. <laughs> God damn it. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is... On the back. The card is important because of what is on the back. You wrote yourself a number on the back, but that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. 
Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? Absolutely. We're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiotic, stupid things to... What? Why is my phone... What is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Beep. Mr. Wellington! Hmm, how strange. I can almost swear that you're holding my phone. Y your... Yes! No, 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 it can't. By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. He asphyxiated himself. <laughs> so that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright... The phone you're holding is Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. That is all, the court is adjourned. I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I am so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. He really fucking didn't. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I never won or even tied a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the Goddess of Misfortune. And then at the Academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. That's got a meme. <laughs> Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch on to those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, that's right, you were talking about this earlier. Yeah, I've been again recently too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by a pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand and... Before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh. I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. I think everything is all my fault. Dustin's death, your head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm gonna find a new life for myself starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll have found the whole ocean's worth of good luck by then. Good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet. I'm gonna make it. I promise. 
Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Y yeah, that's the spirit, I, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. Ah, what a horrible day. I've got my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here it goes. This might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe, he's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases, but he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions and lunch, but in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person, I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but... Maybe he's mistaking me for someone else? Oh, fucking hell. Don't do that, dude. Sorry, guys, my dog, uh to say he would uh, sniff my um, surgically uh, altered foot. Surgically altered? What do you mean? Maybe he's mistaking me for someone else. And this girl, Maya? You, you finally remembered. <laughs> this is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right, I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example, Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. <laughs> I think I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I'd start from the very over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick! Let's go to our usual burger joint. God, a burger does sound so good right now. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since you came back into my life. And and that story. That story began on one rainy afternoon, two months ago. Alright guys, I'm going to end this episode here. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Till next time, my name is Lucky Mayo, and I am signing off.